Okay, hello everyone. Let's see together the resampled methods exercise session of the introduction to the statistical learning book. So the first exercise is related to an example in the book. So for example, they want to create a function that minimizes the variance of these values, the G, the S and Y related to the alpha value. So to make that, we need to take account the, pro the, the property of the variance. So to me, it was really useful to see the, this property here on Wikipedia. So based on this formula, I transform this one into this sentence, and then we use simple multiplications in order to get this form. So we have the level times all these things that is, for these people we, we take as a, as a constant number. So you, you, you just think in your mind that all this part, even though have a lot of symbols, it's just one number. And the same with the, the first level of alpha. And then a constant. Then we need to use the power derivative. So here's also the link in Wikipedia, you can see. And so when we derivate, this part is, we go to zero and, and also this exponent, we go to zero. So, so this become one. And these two comes here and we reduce that level. And then we need to equal that function to zero. And then we just need to solve the equation. That, that's the way to, to demonstrate this function. Uh, we will now derive the probability, uh, derive the probability that a given observation is part of a boosted sample. Suppose that we obtain a boosted sample from a data set of n observations. So here we are going to use a basic theory of probability for these questions. What is the probability that the first bootstrap observation is not in the G observation from the original sample. So as we, when we use bootstrap, we are sampling with a replacement, we replacement. All the numbers have the same probability to be in any bucket. That would be one uh, under M. But when we, as we want the probability that the number is not in a given position, we just need to take the, uh, you know, the opposite is the uh, one minus the probability. And the second question, what is the probability that the second bootstrap observation is no? So the probability is the same. So it, it doesn't matter what's the position. Argue that the probability of the observation is not in the bootstrap sample is, so for example, if we have a specific observation and we want to prove that that observation wasn't used in our resample after making a bootstrap, we need to multiply uh, the probability of not being part of the data set n times. And yeah, basically they, they just uh, want to emphasize this in this exercise. And then they ask of a question. When we have a data set with five rows, what is the probability that the J observation is, is in the boosted sample? So as the probability of that, that observation is known in that sample, is related to this value, we just need to take the opposite of that value. Uh, to me, it was a little bit confusing that part, but I use a little bit of simulation. So I think when you have some doubt related to it, you can perform a really simple simulation to, to change your, your logic. And then we just need to repeat that function for one, Hundred observation or ten thousand observations, 
And as we can see, even though the probability is a little bit lower, it is lower, but it's like it gets constant, it has a limit. So based on that assumption, there's they, the book asked us to create a, the function, a, to, to plot a function reflecting that. And as we can see, even though the number is really high, uh, the probability is a flat, a, a flat uh, line. Uh, basically, uh, I think I'm not using this part. Yeah. Then, uh, we will now investigate numerically the probability of the boosted sample M equals 100 constraint the observation uh, in the observation four. Uh, the book use uh, a for loop to make this, but uh, I prefer not to use for loop. So I use the B apply function is almost the same to the S apply function. It will have the same result. Just that the B apply function needs to have an example of the type of data, the value that we want to create as an output. So as I want me, they gave me for every, uh, for every test, they give me a true or false. I just need to support here a true or false or even a NA value. When you write NA here on R, uh, maybe, yeah, yeah. I think I didn't show the screen. Make sure my host here. And we go to R and we take type of type of NA is a logical value. The same to the true or false. So you also can supply an A. I would prefer to just the true. And yeah, and I'm checking that the four number uh, is between, is in this sample. That is, this sample is performing a really, uh, a bootstrap. And yeah, and then we take the mean to get the proportion of bootstrap where that observation was used. We now review the K4 cross validation, explain how the uh, K4 cross validation is implemented. It involves randomly dividing the set of observation into K groups of faults of probably or, or approximately equal size. So you want to divide your data in K groups of the same size, preferably. Sometimes you cannot do it the same, but most of the time they need to be really close to each other. The first fault is, is treated as a valid set and the methods is fit on one reminding uh, in other faults. So you repeat that process many times. What are the advantages or disadvantages of the K4 cross validation related to the validation set approach and the leave one out cross validation? So we have here a table. The accuracy of the validation approach is lower. And, and also for the leave one out cross validation is lower. And yeah, even though both are good, the leave one out and the K cross validation, the K fold validation is better. So time efficiency for the validation approach is higher. So you just need to, to feed a model once, but the, the leave one out validation is really lower. Uh, you, you need a lot of time to, to run that. If you have many rows, just imagine you have one million rows in your data set, you will fit your mother one million times. 
uh, proportion of that I use to the method is lower in the evaluation approach. So you just use in uh, half of the data to perform the analysis. Uh, and the leave one out validation yeah, is higher than the K cross validation. The estimate variance, you don't have any estimation for the variance in the variation approach. And the leave one out, the, estimate, the estimation variance is higher also. And that may be the, that the reason that the book explains why the uh, K cross validation, K form, Cross validation is is better in the est estimating the testing. Uh, suppose that we use some statistical learning method to make a prediction for the response y yeah, for a particular value of the predictor x. Carefully describe how you might estimate the standard error of our prediction. We will use a bootstrap method to resample the original data set and many times with a linear method. If it a statistical learning method on each sample, predict the value based on the predictions we want to study and calculate the standard deviation of the response, which is a good approximation of the standard error as we can, as we can see on page uh, 210. Uh, and let's go to the apply uh, exercises. And uh, in chapter, we need to fill a model using the default data the, and plus the balance and income. As we want to, as we need to fit that function many times, uh, we create as a formula. So I don't need to write it many times. And it's a really useful trip if you need, for example, then in this case, of course, it's an exercise, but when you are working, maybe you it's, it's better to, to say the formula in this way, and then you can use it or modify just in one place. That's for why I, I use it this way. And then we've, we fit a logistic regression using the, that data set, and you, we can see the coefficients. The variance is a positive, the income is a positive coefficient. So as the balance or income increase is, I think less probable that someone will default. No, it's more probable that someone will default. So using the variation set approach, uh, we can use the initial split function from the R sample, R sample package from the tidy models using the proportion at 0.5 and starting by the our predictor. And no predictor is like the, the response, yeah, using the our response. And yeah, we have performed the split or we're setting our seed to for reproducive, uh, to make reproducible our work. And then we train the model using the training data. And yeah, and you, you, you're watching the model. Then we use the argument function to make the predictions. So we can see here, the default is the original value and we can see the prediction class. based on the testing data. And then we can use the summarize functions to, to take the mean when the default and the predictor class are different. That is our test error rate. Is in this case, I think it's pretty low. And then we need to repeat this process using many seeds because they want to teach us how this process might vary based on the sampling. And here we can see how the, the number are not the same. Yeah, not, not the same, but really close to each other. And 
Then they also to include the student, uh, but converting into a dummy variable. Uh, I think the logistic regression and the linear regression do that automatically, but some models don't do it. So for that reason, the, the recipe package also have a state domain and we convert to dummy variable. And after including that variable to our analysis and performing the same calculating the test error rate, put it all together based on the seed use. So we use the same seed here to the same seed in the previous exercise of so the seed. So the variability of random won't have any effect. And we can see that including the student variable doesn't create any special effect. The difference in the test error are close to zero. And then and they ask us to, to check the coefficient of the model that we created previously and, and check the standard error of each term. Then they ask us to create a function to extract these coefficients from, from this part, but we don't, we don't need to create that function using the, the, the same thing. Then, you see, now we are going to extract, uh, we're going to calculate the standard error of this function using the, this data. So how we can do it? We apply bootstrap to the original data. We're going to apply 500 times. Then we fit a logistic regression on the our default formula to fit. So we define that it's balance plus income to, and then we use the analysis function to extract the information. And then we just need to apply the tidy function for each bootstrap. For the idea, have the bootstrap ID example, and then we calculate the standard deviation of the bootstrap distribution. That is our the standard error. And then making a left join for both estimations, we can see that our difference are really, are really low. And then they ask us just to, to create a, a, using the weekly data, um, a logistic regression model using the lab one and lab two. And we do, and, and do it using the parse package. And then we uh, use it just removing the first, the first row. So they are like uh, asking us to perform the leave one out cross validation. Okay. Ah, okay, let's ask at the end. So we use here. And so they are make, like making the leave one out cross validation uh, by hand. So we try to fit a linear model, uh, leaving one observation out. And we have the coefficient, so the model won't change too much for one observation. And then they ask us to calculate the prediction for that particular observation. So in this case, we use the outman function and just select the first. So here, you just need to check here that here we are removing the observation and here you, we are just taking that, the same observation, the first one. And we can see that the duration here is down, but it predict class was up. So it was a one one, uh, one prediction. Then they give us the instructions basically to, to create a link one cross validation. There are sample package have 
uh, one function to create them. So we are going to use it and set it as a data table. So first, we need to take the, the data frame and extract the list like on, on nest. So this function of, when I'm doing here, like this function, taking out the, the first observation and there's taking the training and by ID is like on nesting on tidyverse. Then we create the model and save it in a column. When we have the ID and the model, and that's the only two columns, we create, a, we join the testing data. So we, the testing data is the same, have the same number of rows of the original data set. And when we have our model in one row, the same to the observation that we want to test, we create the prediction using the prediction function. So we take the model, the new data. So we will perform this with these tests on each row and predict the class. And then we got, we save the, it's an error. So when it's, it's different, we will have a true value. And then we just need to take the mean of the column to, to take the, our, the zero right. Um, oh yeah, I think I'm missing the, the main, SSI. So it was the exercise. Let me open this again. Apply. Then we we create this this simulated data. So we is taking 100 observations. We take 100 observations based on the a random distribution of mean one, mean zero, standard deviation one. And then we use the same variable to create this equation. So we are taking the values S and then taking a minus two times L square and just adding a little bit more noise. And then we, we save the data. And this data, the question was how many rows and how many predictors. So we have 100 hollows and one predictor that is S. Then we create a scatter plot and we also add the line just to see the trend. And then they ask us to, to perform at least one hour, I think, cross validation. And let me think about it. Yeah, because here I'm applying this one split. Yeah, this one cross validation for all these functions. For, so we are going, we start with a linear regression and then we, up, we increase the level to the second level, third level, and fourth level equation. And then we need to calculate our test error rate for each one. And here we can see our standard error because there was a, a yeah, linear regression that they are And we can see the, 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 the error rate was really high because the function is no is not linear. So we have a really clear trend that is not linear. But when we get the second level and we increase the level of the function, uh, our test error rate doesn't, doesn't decrease. So the, our best function is the second one based on the degree and then repeat using another random seed 
and for the results, uh, your results are the same as the, porque son, why are they the same, why they are the same. And the point that you are, when you perform a leave one out cross validation, you are not in, making any sum, many, any random process. So you don't need to set us in and the result will be the same. And if this process is really slow, I didn't want to perform the game on my, my computer. And then the end day, as I said, again, it, it happened as we expected, it happened as we expect. And then they asked us to check the com comment that is significant, if, if, how are significant the coefficients. So I start with the first degree function. We see that it seems like it's significant, but no, when it's no, the salary is a little bit high as the function doesn't describe a little bit the relationship, but when we uh, level, increase the level of the, of the function, we see that the, the linear function makes a little more sense to the, to the mother and the same to the second level. But as we increase the level, the third function is not significant, and also the fourth level is not significant. Even though they are, they are just using the training data, no, no any other observation, they're taking the, the whole data. Uh, do, do, do. Provide estimation of the standard error of mu. Interpret this result. So to estimate the standard error, we take the standard deviation of the, the value that we want to measure. And then uh, divide in the, the square root of the, the n values. Now, estimate the standard deviation error of mu using the bootstrap, how compare your as well to the b. And my conclusion is that both are really close. So taking the the bottom median estimation, we have a 0 0.04, 0 0.4, 0 0.4, and here we also have 0 0.4, but using the bootstrap method. In this case, we are going to use the infer package. It's also part of the tidy models. And how we use it? We take the data, we specify the, the the color that we want to study, how many resample we are going to apply, and what function do you want to apply in each resample. And when we just need to summarize the value and, and, and make a comparison between the both. And they are us to check the, the confidence interval and also the infer package also have a function to make that. So we just need to provide the bootstrap distribution. We already save the medium, the mean, the mean, the, the point estimate is the mean, perform the level of confidence and specify the, the method we use. We want to use to, to calculate the bootstrap method. In this case, they are assuming normality for this interval. Mm -hmm. Then, based on the data set, we can calculate also the media and perform a bootstrap uh, to calculate the interval using the qualtile function, using as a type the percentage. So rather than calculate the standard error and then apply this function, they went, go to the bootstrap and select the, the quality is related to this level of confidence. Um, 
The conclusion is right. So the intervals for the mean the median seems to be a little bit lower than once for the average. It seems the distribution of the median mean is right skewed. So I'm comparing this part. So the lower value is for the average is higher than the lower values for the mean but for the mean for the quartiles. And the upper value also is higher than the upper. So in this case, for that reason, we see that it's skewed. When we plot the data, we can see that the, 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 the skew, the right skew. Based on the data set, and they want to calculate the medium of the 10 percentile. And we can use the per quantile function with 0 0.1 uh, proportion, and we can see that is 12.75. Now yeah. we can uh, use the booster method to calculate uh, the standard error for that estimation. So in this case, we just need to create the bootstrap using these functions. Proof by risk, replicate, calculate the our metric, and summarize the calculating the standard deviation to get the standard error of this dimension. So, I can see here, and uh, there also have the question that did you find any advantage or convenience to using. The tidy most workflow here. Yeah, I prefer to use the tidy most workflow because you can, it's really easy to generalize when you are making exercise with many, 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 many models. So, for example, when you are performing uh, gainers, neighbors, a uh, model, the output of the model. The way that the list is created is really different for each model or logistic regression or linear regression. So if you just want to want, you just want to learn one method to use all the methods of this book, I highly recommend uh, use the tidy models. Uh, there is also a really important book. Uh, From Emmy. So for every every time that we go to a charter, I go to this lab and check how he was doing the lab using the tidy model. So yeah, you can you can use this. So I, I knew about this resource before even to start reading this book. And yeah, for that reason I, I started reading this book. I thought, oh, I could learn how to use statistic and learning models, and also to learn how to use study models at the same time. I know you have another question. Uh, thank you, Angel, for that insight. Yes, it's great to see tidy models in action. I'm glad to see that it's working out for you. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's really easy to create your custom functions and optimize your, your workflows. Like you just need to learn one sentence, just as the, the brief that you can use the brief to make, for example, SQL queries, or even to access to data table. Mm -hmm. We have the same methodology. So it's a really good package. And, and yeah, I, I prefer to use this so you can use a, your example and start to, to understand how, how to use it. You have any other question? I think we are done for today. Oh, no more questions from me. Thank you. Uh, no more questions. No questions from, from me also. Uh, thank you very much, Angel, for the presentation. Uh, we already have a, a presenter for the next meeting. Mm -hmm. I think, well, I don't know if it's a he or she. It's called Arnab Day. 
he hasn't joined us, I think, in any of the meetings, but at least we, we will get to meet that person for the next one. So see you next week. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye.